Um, so we're, we're back on the mobile platforms. You have the floor. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ina Vasilieva. I'm a reverse engineer and malware analyst at Human. Uh, today, I'm going to present you uh, some insights about the Pareto botnet. And I think uh, you already heard about the Pareto principle in the morning, so I won't um, stop. So now you have the real application of uh, the principle uh, in the cybersecurity world. Uh, so a little summary of the Pareto botnet is the um, uh, operation of the most sophisticated schemes uncovered in the connected uh, TV ecosystem to date. Uh, it was uh, nearly a million infected Android devices, uh, pretending to be millions of people watching ads on smart TVs uh, and um, other devices, uh, spe specifically streaming, that causing invalid traffic on the streaming platforms. And we encoded the traffic uh, for the average of 650 million bits, uh, bit requests per uh, day. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, me and my team uh, were uh, found the 29 Android apps as well as 36 Roku channel apps that were spoofing more than 6,000 6, uh, CTV apps, uh, including um, apps from the Chromecast, Fire TV, uh, Apple TV, LG Smart TV, as well as Roku. Uh, several uh, of the Android apps uh, were available only on third-party marketplaces, and uh, Pareto exploit uh, exploited uh, many organizations and components from the uh, streaming ecosystem and technology, as well as uh, uh, platforms. And they have the separate Roku operation that is a little bit more smaller than the Android, Android component of the botnet. Um, and, um, and they both share the same uh, comment and control as well as the configurations and uh, do the same productivity of, of spoofing uh, smart TV and consume streaming um, uh, devices and uh, ad branches. And the most important question, how did it work? Um, so um, uh, the uh, whole botnet is uh, over one, bil uh, one million uh, Android phones. Uh, strong, and each phone was pretended uh, of uh, has d multiple identities of uh, to mimic or mask uh, of the uh, streaming devices, and uh, so it's over than one million uh, because one uh, phone can be uh, represent a few identities at the same time uh, to consume uh, ads and uh, streaming uh, uh, TV as well. And uh, the bot uh, operators was using um, that kind of a huge scale of the botnet to render uh, ads as well as uh, um, on the higher prices for the CTV advertisement to cash in a lot of money if, uh, as a result. And uh, towards the 30 days, about like 30 days uh, when we took down the botnet, we uh, saw the average of the 650 million bit requests uh, per day. And uh, if we go more uh, to the technical side of the um, apps, uh, the Android app forces infected devices visit URLs um, specified by the operator uh, in the specific SDK named TopTop Top SDK. Uh, for the simplicity, I will use uh, this flashlight Analyte app and the newest version of the SDK that is available on the marketplace. Um, the top top SDK um, matured for the multiple stages of um, how the uh, bot, uh, botnet uh, campaign was um, handling and everything. So it started with the simple clicker with the user agent spoofing, and it blew uh, to the uh, full uh, SSL uh, emulation stack. Uh, the top top SDK included in several apps, not all of them, and we found a lot of uh, apps that are still available on the Google Play Store. And most of them are gaming and uh, some basic functionality like a flashlight. Uh, for example, this uh, flashlight Analyte app uh, claimed to be ad-free, but uh, when we examined on the dynamic analysis as well as static analysis, we saw in the background uh, in the traffic there was a huge load of traffic associated with ads, uh, but mostly fake ad impressions to cash in the money, but not actually rendering any ads on the display. So it was all uh, fake ad impressions. 
Um, the top-top SDK, there is a two versions of SDK. The older version is more open, as you can see. All the strings and methods and classes are more open, uh, easy to search on and to connect the dots. The newest version is more obfuscated. Uh, there's only two um, uh, classes were open. Uh, as you can see on the older version, there is a click URL service. This is in the uh, flashlight, so why the flashlight app needs to click URLs. Uh, in the new SDK, there is like two services, the start service receiver and the run, uh, run task service. Um, if we go back to the uh, start service receiver, it's basically the extension, Android extension of the broadcast uh, receiver that essentially triggers the uh, automatic C2 um, communication and uh, pinning the C2 on boot. Uh, this behaves like a persistent mechanism to um, allow the apps to get new batch of job as well as the uh, payload uh, and work for every 30 seconds. And, and then, yeah, so here, look at every 30 seconds. Um, that uh, uh, it will pin to the C2. And okay. so deeper in the app code, uh, there is, uh, we can find the uh, base64 encoded string, which is points to the master C2 URL, and it also initialized the uh, shared references property uh, with the default values for um, spoofing ciphers of uh, various CTV devices. As you can see, there's like Roku, Apple, Chromecast, uh, Fire TV, Apple TV, et cetera. Uh, basically all that involved in the uh, botnet campaign. Uh, the older version, uh, doesn't uh, has th that much encoding. Uh, it's also used the base64 algorithm, but uh, it's uh, only in newer version, they only tried to hide the C2s, but not, uh, it was more like on the plain side rather than the encoding. Uh, and go back, uh, the uh, master C2 contains two fields of initial uh, configuration for cipher spoofing, as well as the separate C2 endpoints from which all the apps uh, in the operation can pull work. Uh, so both ciphers and uh, data fields require us uh, to do the custom solution, so we remove the first 10 bytes uh, of the string in order to make it uh, 64, um, base 64 compliant. And uh, when you decode the um, uh, string, you can see um, there is field, look, data fields uh, that list apps as well as uh, respective uh, endpoints. And based on the information that we received from the file, the team, um, uh, uh, me included, uh, was able to identify the apps that uh, contain uh, top top SDK as well as libraries. Not all of the apps were containing any references to, to it, but there is like, uh, definitely communication going to the same C2. But uh, what we think it was is that the attackers and uh, fraudsters on the botnet were testing the waters, how the Google Play Store will defend against uh, that kind of um, fraud, and it turns out Google Play doesn't have any defense on that fraud. Uh, so they just continue to use the same SDK as well as uh, loading apps with the newer version with more obfuscation to avoid detection. And also, if we vis visit the URLs and cover it in the two fields uh, JSON, uh, that is also not logical for, by default, so it's uh, varies by the device. Uh, uh, instead, uh, we all, uh, uh, created the customized solution decryptor that um, basically um, custom decryption routine. Um, what you can see is a simple uh, implementation of IS CBC encryption with the hard coded uh, key. And decryption requires uh, us, um, so as you can see here with some padding. Um, Decryption requires uh, pulling the snippet out and running it over JSON response uh, from the um, receipt from the server. Um, and, okay. So because uh, we were able to um, uncover the URLs, visiting URLs uh, was not giving us any noteworthy or interesting insights. So instead, we, what we did is uh, we dynamically forced a detonation of the sample to uh, uncover more um, insights uh, from dynamic and static um, point. And uh, for the further static analysis revealed that uh, there is a um, 
glimpse of what we can expect as the response from the C2. And um, even though it's a little bit hard-coded, like um, hard-coded hard for the flashlight app, uh, they leverage the custom um, TLS um, stack and uh, HTTP client. They also used um, full header and cipher control for the communication. And uh, towards the end, uh, they also spoofed the uh, devices uh, configurations and uh, characteristics, such as Windows dimensions, because since it's all of this is on Android phones, but they were spoofing the CTV devices like TVs, so they need to know the dimension of the Windows uh, to make it seem like it's actual TV, not the Android phone. Um, so initially, all of this were done through the uh, fine control of the OCK HTTP3 library, and as time passed, attackers uh, get more sophisticated. Uh, they increase their um, capabilities and to, to avoid detection, and they started to work on their own uh, HTTPS uh, client. And as you can see on the screenshots here, uh, there is the current. Um, code with the custom HTTPS implementation. And on this slide, you can see the features of the own uh, Cypher uh, implementation as well as uh, protocol customization. And this is all the setup for the uh, Cypher and the uh, protocols uh, in app. And since the work pull from the server gets uh, routed through the libraries of the custom OCK HTTP3 uh, implementation, uh, depending on the device, um, as you can see here, the from Fromcast or the Apple TV, it will pull um, the needed information, uh, and it uh, will be different cipher for each device, uh, and will be a different configuration as well. Uh, the device string uh, gets routed to uh, the packed switch statement uh, that needs to um, go to the OK, uh, OK, OK HTTP <laughs> connection spec, and in, uh, this is done in order to uh, make sure that there, it's, uh, there is no um, compatibility of the cipher that will be used uh, later on in, in uh, the, the, or the cipher that the library needs to um, introduce later on. Uh, and if you look here, uh, the, um, while the default um, uh, OCK, uh, HTTP connect, uh, connection spec uh, was not modified at all, they did tempered with the uh, default interceptor uh, for the socket level in order to um, add more Roku edge um, apps and cases. And uh, the extra Roku bytes uh, were um, not sent over the socket in the vanilla library uh, through the Android, but uh, while it, uh, it was tempered version, they took a little bit more extra work and extra steps uh, to make sure that it's the emulation of the behavior, it's as close as possible to the real devices. Uh, and as you can note in here, the C0075 um, app socket, uh, they, uh, they use the socket object inside of the interceptor, and this is essentially an extension of the socket uh, they use to spoof the um, TLS traffic on various uh, CTV devices, and by patching the OCK HTTP uh, client and the implement, uh, interceptor um, and the library of the TCP traffic, uh, like level control over um, flow of the data. Um, we can see um, the inside the implementation of various ciphers as C, you can see here, uh, that are uh, precisely used among the uh, CTV devices. Uh, the C2 server has the ability to dictate uh, how the Android-centered uh, phones present itself to the ad server, so it will um, mimic as possible uh, as uh, it could to uh, make sure that it's uh, present to its server as the streaming uh, TV device, not the Android phone. Uh, and uh, this was possible uh, through these, all those million of noise, uh, uh, no knots in, uh, of the uh, phones uh, to pretend to be a consumer of the streaming products. And uh, the code shows the operator of the botnet also uh, modified the security parameters to make it um, configurable, and they want to ensure the, all the Android uh, uh, generated traffic correctly impersonate uh, on the popular streaming TV platforms. 
Um, so the uh, nearly 1 million um, Android phones were pinning every 30 seconds to the C2 uh, using the top top SDK inside of them and acting as nodes of the botnet. Um, they were also uh, impersonating a lot of identities inside of it. So for example, one phone can have uh, Apple TV, uh, LG Smart TV, or others. And um, the um, rather than show the ad, the top top SDK will um, spoof the uh, device. It will merely uh, report it APIs that were chosen for the, uh, this precise ad. And uh, it will fake the Im uh, impression of the advertisement and will say that it's shown, but in reality, uh, no ads were displayed or shown at all. So it will just uh, uh, respond for that the ads were shown and get the money from the uh, advertisement. Um, and also the um, botnet apparatus took a little bit extra step for the security. So all of this was um, um, uh, dynamically configurable uh, on the um, life. So whatever uh, they see um, that there is imbalance of the, like what's uh, streaming devices they are spoofing, they will adjust the settings so all the, uh, to avoid detection, so they will adjust the settings to make sure that it's not detected at all. And uh, they will uh, make sure that some of the phones will do uh, XYZ uh, streaming um, services, the other ones do the other one, as well as the configuration and the settings of the device to make sure that um, uh, nobody will uh, get it caught. Um, well, basically balance it out. Uh, and also they took an extra step of the um, fraud deduction um, verification providers. Uh, so if you check the um, most popular fraud uh, verification uh, systems, it will not detect uh, Pareto apps as the fraud. And uh, about Rocco focus separation, um, it's uh, uh, pinning to the same C2 as the Android base. As you can see here, the uh, aminaday.com is the same C2 that is used for the Android apps. And the developer that uh, stayed for the um, develop the Roku focused uh, um, operation and apps is the Playdium. And in their privacy policy, uh, they reference the Top Top Media, which is the brand behind the Top Top SDK. Um, and uh, yeah, they also share the configuration with the Android uh, centered uh, part of the botnet. Um, of course, it's the... Um, I can share a lot of the for the attribution because it's an ongoing investigation and we took a legal action against these threat actors. But what I can uh, share today is that um, the Top Top Media brand uh, is uh, responsible for the development of the Top Top SDK as well as the uh, stays behind the uh, Palladium uh, Roku uh, developer. And there is a solid evidence in the traffic as well as the uh, encode. Uh, the references of, to the either top top media or their reference or shorter name as TTM, as you can see here in the traffic or uh, here in the SDK. Uh, and um, to happy news, <laughs> we took down the botnet. Uh, and uh, the takeaway as we develop algorithm how to protect our customers as well as uh, partners. And we uh, notified both Google and Roku stores to remove all the apps from the source and to adjust their defenses against the um, unprecedented attacks on the CTV devices. And we shared in, uh, all these findings with the law enforcement to uh, persecute the threat actors behind that. And we also enhanced the um, uh, standards for the um, device manufacturers impacted by the Pareto, so they uh, have more, um, like, better defenses against uh, such attacks, and um, including Pareto as well. And um, if you are curious about the IOCs as well as the white paper, uh, there is two blog posts on our website. You can check it out. Uh, I swear there is no malware. You can you can uh, safely scan the code. And uh, yeah, that's it. There you can find me on LinkedIn and um, open for the questions. Thank you. <laughs> okay, there's a question in the back. Okay. Hello, very nice presentation. I've got a question on the TLS kind of spoofing that has been done uh, in this malware. 
do you know if from a network standpoint the GS3 signature of um, the client has been modified to mimic the, the one they want to spoof? Yes. So they tried to make it as close to real devices as possible, so they, do, they did modify the data as well, the first protocol. So basically that's the reason how they were not, uh, not detected by the providers. Another question? Another question? No? Okay, thank you very much.